Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel, Hazel and Naka Design. I, um, you know, it seems to me that all I've been doing lately are uh, thrifting videos. And part of that is, uh, you know, the pent up demand and the lack of opportunity while I was recovering from surgery. Um, and through the miracle of YouTube video scheduling, um, you'll never know <laughs> that these were all just a couple of big hauls that have been spread out over several weeks of episodes. Let's get to it. Some of the books that we're about to see, <coughs> excuse me, are um, focused on babies. And I kind of cheeky, cheekily, <laughs> In a cheeky way, I said in some of my comments to you guys, uh, to the comments on the baby journal videos, that, oh yeah, now I bought a couple of baby books. Watch if that doesn't just totally dry up the whole market for uh, baby books. But anyway, I needed to do it. Um, Lois Hole was a simple um, woman who married a farmer and turned a little tiny, well, I don't know how tiny it was, but a farm just outside of Edmonton, around St. Albert, into a mega, mega operation. So <clears throat> between her down-to-earth personality and uh, many, many titles in her series, I don't know if, I mean, I think a lot of us have, you know, all of them. This particular one I've never owned before. It's called Vegetable Favorites. <clears throat> and I really got it with the intention of giving it to my daughter. Then I flipped through it and saw that there are illustrations. So, hey, mama's keeping this one. Um, the, the reason these books have been so popular with... Um, so many of us is because we live in a unique, uh, well, no, I don't know how unique, but a, a challenging um, growing zone. <clears throat> so if Lois, uh, she's deceased, if Lois and her family could grow these things at their place, theoretically, we could grow them at our place. Now, um, she was philanthropic as well and received the highest, well, she probably had, got a number of honors, but eventually, I don't know what year it was, was named Lieutenant Governor of the Province of Alberta. And um, essentially what that means is that she was the Queen's representative um, in the province. Uh, <clears throat> it did a lot of fundraising. There's a women's hospital named after her. Um, so, indeed, a remarkable woman. So, Hillary, I'm keeping this book. Okay. Um, I tend to like to gravitate to the little tiny uh, gift book types because they, you know, the pages are so darn cute and they have um, usually great images in them. And, of course, if you want to reuse the cover, they make really cute uh, journals. So this one, of course, because it's about mothers, has some baby and child and mother pictures in it. So again, I may be able to, or at least, I mean, I really didn't flip through it till now, <clears throat> but I could certainly uh, fussy cut, like look here, this, you know, nothing to compete on that side. So a lot of these images would be great for fussy cutting. <clears throat> Barbara Bush. Anyway, oh, look at that little munchkin. Quite a head of hair there on that kid. Anyway, so now, once I've done this video, I can then um, begin to, you know, take it apart if necessary. I probably don't need any more for this second baby book, but who knows. This one is called Doodling in French, How to Draw with Joie de Vivre. So, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, and you might be wondering, in fact, the woman who rang it in for me said, 
doodling in French. What does that mean? You can see it's in mint condition. It was probably another one of those books that somebody bought and gave to somebody thinking, man, this is going to be the ultimate gift. And <laughs> maybe it was never even cracked open. But you can see, number one, oh, and they're perforated. I didn't know that. Are they all? Oh, maybe just pages at the back that are intent. Okay, so that's perforated. That is not. Okay, uh, now pages for your doodling enjoyment. So these all must be uh, perforated. And of course, they're just ones. Well, I mean, they're not. They're not printed on both sides, but they're nice on both sides. So those could clearly all come out and be used as little signature pages. The book is not, I can probably use the grid here, uh, three, six, just over seven inches, and it's probably square. Three, six, yeah, square. Okay, so in the rest of the book, we see pages like we like to gravitate to. So here, draw a bird, draw a crown. So you can see how simplistic the instructions are. Not even instructions, just a few little diagrams. And, you know, a person could also just fussy cut some of the elements out too, or use the whole page as it is. There's a cake. Oh, and of course, also the French terminology. Mannequin, le mannequin. So I thought that this was quite the uh, the find. I do have a lot of elements, including some authentic vintage uh, French um, books and ledger and pieces that I bought from a French um, Etsy salesperson a couple of years ago. And why am I sitting on them or hoarding them? I know not. Carrie, look at that, Fleur de Lis. Now in five easy steps, anyone could draw one. The trick, of course, would be making each half symmetrical, but hey. So anyway, I just thought this was quite the sweet little book. It just, I mean, it's just these pages, these layouts here are just, you know, exactly the kind of stuff that we do. So that, did I say a date? I probably not. 2012. Anna Korba. Okay, this book, I'm not sure if I really needed it, to be honest. I mean, do I need any books? Probably not. 50 Machines That Changed the Course of History. And I, I really hope I don't have, I don't, really hope I don't have it already. Cool and papers. I think some of these elements might be, or images might be, oh, look at that might be good in um, a, what do you call it? Steampunk, we'll see. Hubble Space Telescope, IBM. Yeah, now people have computers on their wrists. So you can see it, it sort of has a, well, I don't really want to say, what is this? Is this a predecessor for an MRI? Oh, x-rays were only discovered in the late 19th century. Computer computed tomography by EMI blah blah blah. CT scanner resulted from that. And of course, none of us ever want to be scanned. 
but thank goodness the technology exists when we must. So, <laughs> a fridge, a drill. You know, um, the church that we were married in, a Ukrainian Greek Orthodox church, celebrated the 85th anniversary of, their, of its construction about a week or so ago. I wasn't feeling up to par, and thank goodness, because the day went on forever. Um, church people are famous for that. Anyway, I oh, so it's a mushroom dome church. So if you can imagine, that church was built okay, 85 years ago. So what was that, 1939, I think they said. Can you imagine building a structure like that, that is still standing 85 years later, without a laser level, a cordless drill, unless of course you count <laughs> the kind that you work by hand, um, scissor lifts, um, you know, like how? Uh, the man that um, I guess headed up the construction, I mean, that must have been his skill and his passion. I don't know his story. I don't know if he came from the old country having done that in um, in Ukraine. But <clears throat> his he supervised the construction of does, well, I shouldn't say does, well, I don't know, lots and lots and lots of churches. And uh, it, it continues to blow my mind. There are some people that can't make, uh, you know, a set of stairs or a... Uh, a toolbox or a birdhouse that isn't wonky. And this guy did these free, I mean, these incredible structures. Of course, inside the church, there is no support whatsoever other than the exterior walls. So those domes, like that central dome, and sometimes they're smaller, just decorative ones on the side. And again, I'm talking about country churches in the middle of nowhere. Um, you know, the cathedrals and so on that are bigger in the cities um, may have more uh, function, well, functional or open domes. A lot of these small ones are just, um, let me just stop for one second. This is a, a an art card that I printed of my painting. Now, this was a, a full sheet of watercolor. This is the actual church that I'm talking about. So there's this large central dome, and you can see that, and I mean, I've obviously I don't have, we don't see the whole thing because this is far more artistic. But you can see there's a shadow of a dome there, 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 and, you know, there'd be another one off to the side here. So, yes, there's nothing inside holding that up whatsoever other than ingenious um, and skillful carpentry. And you can see that the, the walls are not, it's not a box, it's not a, like a cracker box with a dome on top. So, truly, truly remarkable. Anyway, how did I get off on that tangent? Don't know. Okay, this is one of the baby books I got. And you can tell by the cover that it's going to be older. Better Homes and Gardens, new baby book. And again, I didn't... I, that's somebody's price. So I had to pay more than that, trust me. Uh, 1979. I thought I sniffed something, but no, it's fine. So, <coughs> sorry. Black and white photo. Oh, Heimlich Maneuver. Huh. Yeah, I guess if anyone's going to choke on something, it probably would be a kid. Making a splint. Okay, so there are these full-sized... Uh, I won't bother digging on my ruler, but you can see it's probably 11 by 8.5. Full-sized photos now I believe okay so these kind of little things that could be cute or a page like this that could be well let's do the months maybe 
or actually a person could remove all these pages. So one, two, three pages, fold them up and, um, you know, put them in a pocket or something. Uh, oh, great. Pinworms, prickly heat, ringworms, scabies, thrush. <laughs> Apparently, I had bronchitis as, like, it just, I don't know if I was weeks old or three months. I can't remember which it was. I mean, I don't obviously don't remember anything, but was told. There's that tongue depressor. Say, oh, a little kid looking at something. Advice for every age. So, again, really poignant lovely well except maybe that father with the crazy eyes but um really cute full page things oh yes and aren't we all surprised the day the kid finally breaks out of the crib that was always fun that was like a prison break um, when Cade, the youngest grandson, was, you know, would come to the farm, of course, we didn't have a crib, but we had one of those travel playpens or whatever they call them. And <clears throat> so he was in there and then all of a sudden you'd hear a little plop and he's over the side. And then he goes back in. So we have that on video. Of course, when our kids were breaking out, nobody was videotaping anything. Look at those little rolls on those thighs. Anyway, I'm spending too much time on this book. I know. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, we've got the birth process. I thought this was cute. There really is very little color in here, but sort of the layout for the baby. Some of the supplies. Furniture. And that might be the extent of the color. Oh, look, Mama has to do some exercises, so she's ready for that big, big and brutal operation of giving birth. Look at that food. Look, at it. it's just so darn healthy. <clears throat> this is cool, too. So, yeah, it's kind of maybe a shame that there weren't a few more uh, colored photos, but still, I think this is pretty good. Did I say the year? I think I said 70-something, didn't I? 79. <clears throat> um, when I see a cover like this, let's see what the actual cover's like. Just a matter of time, and of course, it's the other time. With a, a dust jacket like this, you know it's going to be good. You're among friends. <clears throat> so this book is a little bit taller, so... <gasps> Six, nine. I probably didn't count that right. Um, sometimes I find it difficult, well, most of the time, I find it difficult to use these um, glossy book jackets, but um, the pages inside are not too bad. Okay, so maybe the illustrations on the cover were a little bit better than the ones inside, but they're not bad. The best moments of a visit are those which, again and again, postpone its close. So, opportunities for fussy cutting. The desk and doodle bag basket. Fill with his or her very own personal set of desk accessories or craft tools. That's in quotations. You might include items like a nice pair of scissors in a neon or pastel color, a stapler, a scotch tape dispenser, a ruler, pencil sharpener, some engraved stationery and stamps, or a nice toolbox could be filled with a screwdriver, a hammer, a tape measure, a ruler, a block of wood, nails, pliers, etc. And that's for somebody who's three to, or seven to ten. Uh, oh, budding artist basket. This is for a three to five year old. A bright colored basket would work well for this particular age, including any of the following crayons, washable markers, coloring books, paint with water books, watercolor paints and brushes, safety scissors, and a few containers of Play Doh. 
there is a recipe for Play-Doh in this book with cookie cutters. Make an artist palette for the tag. I think that most of us have all of those supplies. So does that mean we've regressed to the three to five year old stage? Again, just, you know, kind of sweet, charming. And even the text pages look like, sort of like um, a handwritten, it's a handwritten font of some sort. So there's some recipes, snickerdoodles, cookies and brownies, squash, anyone? White chili. Why would they spell chili with an E? Chili with an E is a country, not a recipe, not a food. Anyway, those of us who know how to spell are offended when we see misspellings. <laughs> that would be cool to fussy cut for this doily. Anyway, I do need to speed it up. I, I don't have that many more, but, you know, that's how videos get away from me. So this one is called Natural Nursery Knits. 20 hand knit projects for the new baby. Baby. So it's obviously a soft cover. That's cool. So we can almost judge by this what the photography style is going to be like. 2009. Boy, I don't know that this book was ever opened before either. Now, is that gorgeous? Sandy, you must have baskets like this lying all around all over the place with skeins of wool. Some patterns. Oh, a peony. I need to do a peony journal. Okay, let's get to the good stuff. So some booties and some buttons and some weathered wood. And some grass. Uh, what is this? Oh, a recycled rag basket. Fabric from favorite discarded or worn clothes or bargain remnants are washed and cut into strips of yarn, quotes, for this basket. The basket is knitted. Oh, knitted. Yikes. In a seed stitch into a basic cross shape that assembles a simple uh, box shape. Okay, there will be no knitting in this department. Cute little, um, what do they call them? Perambulators? Mm. Anyway, baby buggy. <laughs> If you can't get your yourself around, oh, rabbit rattle. So put it on the little kid's hand, and as they bop themselves, move their hand and bop themselves in the face. There's that peony again. Look at those little toques. A giraffe, a polka dotted giraffe. Yeah, these would lend themselves to great um, journaling cards. I guess actually several of these books could have almost qualified for bolo. Bolo books, I might have to use that hashtag just because several of them would fit the bill. <laughs> Those little shoes. Shoes and booties. There's that woven or that knitted basket again. <laughs> That's sweet. Look at that munchkin. Fair Isle bunting. 
see what I mean about the photography. Pram. But what's the long version? <laughs> Cute bear. Cute baby. Cute peony. Everything is just cute, cute, cute. Look at it. Okay. Now this one I paid more for as well because it was Value Village called it botanical. I mean, not botanical. They called it vintage. This is a nice uh, ratty looking uh, dust jacket and the kind that you could actually use. Um, so, simple compilation. Okay, this guy, I think that's a man's name, Master of Science and a PhD. This is a simple compilation of the terms commonly used in elementary bot botany and of some of the more advanced terms to be met with elsewhere. It is intended to be used by school pupils at the general certificate levels and by first-year university students. Uh, 950 definitions illustrated with over 60 line diagrams. Nice creamy pages. Nary a note was made. <laughs> a lot of index. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff we have in here. And again, because of the sort of creamy nature or ivory color of the pages, it looks, I think this has a scent. Yeah, it's got that old book smell. Not mildew, thank goodness. These, this would probably be great collage fodder, like if you wanted kind of a neutral, See, if you can't read the title of the page, maybe it's better not to <laughs> attempt. It would be great. So like, that's a fiddlehead fern. So some of these, well, everything originates with nature, but you know, if a person was doing some doodling, you don't have to look far too to get some ideas of patterns. Every so often there's another big empty page. Look at this. Fanero gams. Sorry, no science class here today. The teacher called in sick. This is a little more up our speed, I would say. Oh, potent too. We have a year here. Okay, the first one was first printed in 35, and this version is 1960. Okay. I'm going to end with what I think is maybe the most special. This is second to last. Paid quite a bit of money for this one as well. It's bigger and it's got a thicker spine, hardcover, architectural drawing, and light construction. Color wheel, front and center. Let's look at a year. This version is 76. I guess it was copyrighted in 67. So, that's the index. We're going to see elevation type drawings. So, what does it say here? Door frame details and shower steam room sections. So the actual designer, some guy in Atlanta, Georgia. 
So these, I guess, were real plans. The modernized metric system. I probably need to study that. Tables. Okay, so these are appendices at the back here. Modular vertical <clears throat> brick coursing. Sorry, don't know what that means. Either. Floor and re floor and roof beams. My husband took architectural technology, so he could be the translator. Although, you know, when you're married to someone a long time, things rub off on you. Careers in construction. Yes, I'm, I'm sure many draftsmen are wearing ties these days. Um, oh, somebody wrote them on the, these pages. Okay, what is what are these small pages here? So this is specifications for the constructions of construction of a residence. So sort of a boilerplate document for that. Let's get into more of the interesting stuff. And of course, when he took his course, he had to do scale models. And that's where you end up with those little teeny tiny people and those little tiny cars and little tiny trees. And of course, it had all better work out according to what it actually was. Practice strokes and pen and ink. Because, of course, you want to do some elevation-type drawings of the facade. That's how you do a tree. So, again, it's, you know, a combination drawing and construction-type thing. Oh, there's perspective. The legend for what the different symbols mean. Okay, what is all this? Oh... Before my son decided on becoming his own man or becoming his own, owning his own business, and um, he's a qualified electrician. So I was, you know, sometimes people think that tradespeople are people who couldn't make it anywhere else. Well, there is a heck of a lot of math that is required uh, in that. He just didn't like being a, a laborer. Well, I guess a tradesperson, but anyway, far better to be the boss. So this is, oh, look at the lettering. And of course, even to this day, my husband still prints most things because you had to have legible printing on, on any blueprints that you created. And uh, people of all ages and descriptions, I've never seen such, such neat printing. So, yeah. This is a cool way to do the end or the table of contents. Love these little guys. Might have to cut those off. Anyway, okay, and finally, drum roll. Um, when I was looking through the books at this for, at this um, place, this first time that I had been to this uh, thrift store, the lady was very helpful and proud of how she was keeping the, the book display uh, organized. And I have to say, I, anybody, well, and she said the same thing. They sell more books when they're organized in some way. And I know that as a book buyer. And quite often I spend my time in thrift stores, straightening books, putting them right side up, standing them up. If they're upside down or, you know, like sometimes people don't care. But anyway, that's not the point I'm trying to make. She said, and you know, you can also look in this little room over here. Well, this is what I found in that little room over there. Look at those babies. So it says Mom's Almanac. Now, it is not a an old book, but isn't that the sweetest thing ever? 
Could this not be a great, great, great? From the creators of the best-selling The Little Big Book for Moms comes another treasure for mothers. Mom's Almanac. Over 3,000 ideas, suggestions, and helpful hints. Living with and loving children. So, it is... Uh, let's get a grip on the size here. Uh, so, it's nine and a half inches tall. And seven and a half inches wide. And the spine is, I'd say, an inch and a half. Okay. Typical, I flip from the back. Oh, little boo-boo here. Um, I don't think it would affect the pages, though. Okay, so it is on, well, I guess, different colored pages. So this is a soft yellow, little, um, what you may call it, uh, illustration there. Vintage-y type. Um, images as well and of course it's not old because it's talking about software but look at those cute things more of the same than the full page one don't those kids just look like the sweetest most innocent little munchkins So they must have borrowed quite broadly. Is there a page of acknowledgments? Maybe it's elsewhere. So you can see the style, like the style of it, you know, illustration is quite different. <clears throat> Ten classic lullabies to sing to your child. Here are some fairies. Here's, I guess, what, school for? No, I guess it's a choir for those ducks. Shake, rattle, and roll. <laughs> Kid with a slingshot aimed at his brother's butt. That's beautiful. Once a year rituals. <laughs> this kid looks a little bit funny. Now I realize a lot of babies don't have necks, but still, that looks a little funny. This looks like pointillism. That's a sweet little kid. Okay, I'm not going to show you. Despite how it looks, I'm not going to show you every single page. I have other books that are sort of done in this style. <clears throat> not not a, not about babies, but, you know, probably the same publisher. <clears throat> and I have yet to even go near them with a, with a uh, you know, a scalpel or anything or scissors. Feeding a camel. Stepping out. Is this not a beautiful book? And what did we have when, or what did I have when I was rearing a child? Dr. Spock. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Little boy blue. Tea party. <laughs> that cup is bigger than that baby almost. General nutrition. This is gorgeous. Everybody's got their uh, what would that have been? Quart of milk? Uh, 
Okay, let's see what year this was. Oh, oh, there's that little sad face. Oh, it's on the tantrums page. No wonder. That's the precursor of some, usually some screaming. That little mouth turning down. The bare essentials. Okay. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay, edited by Alice Wong and Lena Tabori. Designed by Timothy and Christopher. But where? Oh, where? Is the date? Is this one of those backwards ones where it's at the back of the book? 300 full color illustrations. Okay, we didn't see this page. 2004. Um, yeah, so they do give... <coughs> Illustration credits. Anyway, this I would, well, I mean, there are several good books in this batch, but this is maybe one of the best. <clears throat> anyway, I hope you have enjoyed seeing this. Now I can <clears throat> get tie into the baby books that I do need to use. This one I'm going to keep intact. Uh, for as long as I can, <clears throat> but, you know, there's lots to do here. Baby, 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 vegetable. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. If you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you are a book lover, I invite you, <clears throat> I invite you to check out my playlist on my YouTube channel called What's in My Bookcase. Um, I did that for several months um, as I was bringing to your attention um, genre by genre, theme by theme, books that I owned, own, um, you know, long before I knew what a junk journal or journal making was. <clears throat> so, I mean, there would be birds on books, there would be cookbooks, uh, stitchery books, flower books, probably two or more episodes on that, field guides, uh, art books, and because, <clears throat> excuse me, because it took a lot of, uh, you know, heaving and hauling and toting and rearranging of stuff, I eventually uh, stopped doing it because I think I was, I probably covered the basics that people like you might be interested in. Um, but book haul videos since then have obviously um, filled the breach with everything new that I've acquired since then. So anyway, if you're a book lover, you may want to look that up. And I do have at my feet here another probably bigger book haul session to do. Uh, very soon as well so that I can put these things away anyway thank you so much for being here I hope you've enjoyed it and um, hope that I paused on the covers long enough in case you wanted to make a notation and keep them on your watch list anyway guys thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one bye